record on this computer. So now we're recording. Hi, welcome to Art 117. Now we're going back to the screen chair. Ha. All right. Um, so here we are. Okay. So back to chair design and doing this. Come on. Okay. So is it sure? Okay. So we're doing that. Okay. So human body proportions, human body measurements are really important to designers when they're designing furniture for humans to use and humans to sit in. So I found this wonderful little chart um, when I was looking for human body proportions, uh, especially as it pertains to designers, either interior designers or furniture designers, because the designer needs to know what the critical measurements of the human body are. And this is, you know, subject to change, but I mean, these are kind of like basic uh, generalized proportions so that they will fit most people in most cases. And I'm gonna come down to the lower half of this composition here and really wanna talk about sitting on a chair. And so if, I'm like, if you guys can see my cursor, and we've got people sitting at a table, sitting on chairs, kind of like at a conference table or at a dinner table or something like that. We've got, pe we've got a person here sitting at a desk at, at a possible work surface or um, you know, desktop kind of a thing with a chair. Next to that, we've got somebody sitting perhaps a little bit higher up. Um, the, the seat height from the floor is just a little bit higher up, but it also looks like they are on a raised platform here. So that could be kind of deceptive. And this one too looks like we are trying to design for a, um, a, a stool height, but um, the feet are kind of actually making contact with a step in front of the stool. So this is a little bit deceptive. What I wanted to talk about here, basically, is that the chair height that we're going to be dealing with is 17 inches. And I have to think about that for a minute. I have to do a quick calculation to figure out how many centimeters that is, 2.54 centimeters per inch. So we're talking about 40 centimeters or so, uh, maybe 45, somewhere between 40 and 45 centimeters of seat height from the floor to where your seat is. And that is a really common um, way that designers uh, create chairs so that um, everybody's um, experience of a chair is the same, you know, throughout the world. And, you know, um, when you go from room to room, business to business, home to home, the standard seat height uh, for humans uh, is about 17 inches or about 45 centimeters for seat height. And so we're going to think about that because I've got a seat, I've got a chair over here, I've got a chair that I'm sitting on, I've got another chair that I built, and all of these chairs have that seat height of about 17 inches. So we're going to use that kind of proportion as we go forward <coughs> with, um, with uh, designing our chairs. Um, and this is, I'm recording this thing, so you guys can kind of just let this wash over you right now. And then maybe if you want to take some notes from the recording, you can do that later on, something like that. Another slide that deals with human scale design proportions and in, um, introduces the idea of ergonomics. For the first time, we're actually seeing the word ergonomics on the, on the slide here. And ergonomics uh, is design that relates to the human form and the human proportions so that when you're laying out um, a workspace or a desk or a chair, that the person is comfortable, that they can reach comfortably and work comfortably at um, comfortable um, and non-stressful kind of uh, distances and reach uh, distances and all of that kind of stuff. So. Um, this one kind of shows everything from the idea of a bed and, and the different kinds of bed heights. We have a 50 centimeter height here for a bed, maybe kind of going all the way up to a 70 centimeter height for a bed, you know, over on this side where this person is leaning. We've got a countertop over here that a person is leaning on and they're at about, oh, nine, 90 or so centimeters is the height of this countertop that this person is leaning on right now. That's a really nice counter, counter height for um, kitchen counters and, and working in a, in a kitchen design. Um, so 
over on the right hand side of this image, we have all of these different kinds of uh, furniture concepts that we're dealing with. So a wardrobe is something that would be a closet kind of a uh, thing where you'd be hanging clothes, you put hanging clothes in there. And so the hanger rod and a mirror and breakfast bar, which is a breakfast bar has a different height than a countertop height. Um, the writing desk, you know, we're coming right in here at the writing desk height. Writing desk is just a little bit higher for um, a writing desk or a uh, office uh, desk than the dining room table might be. You can see that the dining table is just a couple of inches, about you know five or eight centimeters lower um, the uh, dining room table is than the, um, the writing desk. Um, over here, we've got stools. We've got a bar stool and a piano stool and a chair and a footstool. And we can just see that these different, different things um, um, that are to support you in, in slightly different ways have really standardized heights that kind of go with them. So we're really gonna be working uh, right around the 50 centimeter height here. Maybe, well, this chair right here, um, this chair height is a really good thing. And that's gonna be 17 inches tall, about 45 centimeters high and that's probably going to be the basis for our design our furniture design <clears throat> when we get there all right so once again we're putting the human into these proportions and measurements these are all um what are these things i'm trying to see if these are inches uh or what because they are some of these are in inches and some of these, I don't know what they are. When it says eight or nine here, that's not, those are not inches and those are not centimeters. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But the idea of, you know, this height right here shows us a 16 inch um, height where the, the person's knee uh, bends and where the seat height gives you the ability to put your feet flat on the floor and your legs are parallel to the floor and this is supposed to be a standard seat height. I'm tall, so I like 17 inches tall because I, <clears throat> I'm getting old and I have a little bit of a hard time getting out of a 16 inch high um, seat. And as a matter of fact, um, some of you who buy um, overstuffed couches and chairs, um, furniture that has been manufactured in the last 20 years or so, that is overstuffed and very soft, uh, upholstered, um, cushioned uh, furniture, you can sink down into that stuff and your butt height becomes, you know, like 12 inches off the floor. And you might actually experience that it's difficult to get out of a chair or a couch where you sink way down in to the, um, to the seat. So seat height is a really, really important proportion that we deal with when we are designing chairs and furniture. Okay, so um, I found another thing here, whoopsie, that has um, common furniture styles from the pretty much mid-century modern uh, types of chairs. But you know, regardless of the actual shape of the chair, it gives a really nice sense of uh, measurements and proportions for the chair. And when we see all of these chairs all lined up together, um, what we're really seeing is that um, seat heights are really similar between all of these chairs. And the back, the back rest um, has a similar angle in all of these chairs and pretty much a si similar seat height. These chairs are about four feet tall um, with a seat height of around 17 inches or so. What is that in centimeters? 45 centimeters for the seat height. And let's double that. Let's say 90 centimeters tall, maybe, maybe a, a meter, maybe 100, meter, 100 centimeters for the uh, backrest height. So that gives us a kind of uh, something to go by in terms of uh, some basic proportions for chairs to play with. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I kept using all kinds of different. Um, search terms with Google, because all of these things are stolen off the internet, all of these things I found on the internet. And I was looking for chair design standards. And this is a wonderful, wonderful illustration here, because this really shows 
you know, the seat height right here. It even shows the angle, five to 15 degree angle of the, of the seat back as it moves from um, your butt, you know, back to where it is uh, supporting you behind the shoulders and the shoulder blades, which is really nice. It gives some kind of standard um, proportions or measurements for, uh, this is not, you know, like a, a easy chair. This is kind of like an armchair that you would sit at a dining room table at. So the idea of having little arms on the chair of a wooden chair um, that come out eight inches to just barely support your elbow. I mean, that's a bare minimum. We would probably want to design something a little bit longer than that, uh, 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 something longer than eight inches, something that might come out 12 or 14 inches so that it came all the way to the, um, to the wrist or maybe even to where the hand is laying flat on this surface. Um, <clears throat> We're even looking at an angle that's being specified here for the, um, for the seat. Not only do we have a uh, 17 inch seat height, but it's, it's uh, slanted back at an angle of five to eight degrees too. So to be a comfortable chair, the seat probably doesn't wanna just be parallel to the ground. It actually wants to be slanted back from uh, the place where it's uh, supporting you underneath your legs and uh, knees, where it slants back to where your butt uh, is being supported by the chair. We've also got some widths to deal with too. So um, I just wanted you to know that these chairs actually have sizes to them and proportions. I'm probably gonna ask you guys to measure your own favorite chair um, back in your dorm room, back in your bedroom, or at your home, um, and see what that set of measurements is, because um, that'll be a really nice point of departure for designing a chair full size that's going to fit you guys. So um, these kinds of measurements and angles are kind of what we um, deal with when we're trying to design chairs um, for actual humans to use and be comfortable in. Okay, <clears throat> my proposal here is to try to get us to design with cardboard. Um, I'm, you know, corrugated cardboard is very inexpensive. It's one of those materials that is a really good stand-in material for just about anything um, like wood or metal, um, plastic. Uh, using corrugated cardboard in a 3D design class uh, to create a product, to create a design prototype for a chair is really fun because it's very cheap. Uh, it's fairly easy to um, cut and manipulate and glue together. Um, and uh, um, cardboard can be quite strong. Uh, the corrugations in the cardboard make the two ply cardboard with corrugations in the center a very strong element. Now, somebody has uh, laminated one shape, you know, together here and, and done that with about 20 layers of cardboard. So this would be an exceedingly strong chair to work with. Um, there's no way that you're going to be able to crush this chair. This chair would have all of the strength of um, uh, <clears throat> wood or a metal chair because it is so uh reinforced with like 20 or even 30 plies of um, or layers of um, cardboard. Um, and this would be one possibility that you might want to consider as a design possibility and a construction possibility for your chair. Because I am going to ask you guys to build a chair that's life size that you can sit on <coughs> so that it will um, support you and be comfortable and be something you're gonna actually wanna keep and maybe take home with you, you know, when uh, school is over or give it away to your favorite teacher so that they have this in their uh, office and so they can do their office hour with students and the students can sit in this chair and it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's bulletproof. It's a huge, strong, wonderful chair. <clears throat> Here's another version of a laminated chair. Um, you can kind of see that curves are very possible in um, 
uh, cardboard and that, you know, um, let me see if I can get my cursor to work here. Um, this, this designer has actually played with the idea of trying to replicate cushions um, that you would find in a, um, uh, you know, a, a soft uh, upholstered chair. So, you know, these rounded cushiony kinds of shapes up here, whoops, at the top of the chair, kind of coming down here to the bottom, create a little bit of a cushion. I'm seeing that the back end of this curve right here does not contact this straight vertical down here. So this would actually, um, it would actually bend just a little bit so that your weight as you sat in this chair and leaned against the chair back, this would actually bend ever so slightly to accommodate that and it would feel something like a, a cushion. This part of the cushion down here where your butt would be, this one is a lot closer uh, in terms of having any space or gap between the bottom of this chair and this uh, kind of hollow cushion thing here. But again, this would, um, this would deform slightly, it would bend ever so slightly, and it would kind of accept the weight of your body as you sat in the chair. And then when you got out of the chair, it would kind of spring back uh, to its original shape, hopefully leaving a little bit of a gap right here. I'm not a big fan <clears throat> of the laminated chair. There's an awful lot of work to do in these chairs because you have to come up with this um, shape and then you have to cut it out you know, 20 different times. That's a lot of cardboard and a lot of cardboard waste. So I'm not a big fan of the laminated chair, but it is one idea that we can play with if you are trying to select a, a chair building process to work with and a shape that you want to work with. <clears throat> Here's another laminated chair that looks as if it was designed on a computer and possibly um, with 3D modeling software, you could come up with a very organic, very fluid kind of a uh, laminated chair. But again, I think, you know, this is the kind of thing that you'd also have to have a um, uh, some kind of a computer controlled cutting system to cut every piece of the cardboard to make it work like this. So this particular design is probably way outside of what we are able to do for this class, but it's fun. It, it, it kind of stimulates uh, the imagination. And so I really like this kind of a chair. <clears throat> the cross slot chair. Um, Another interesting approach to cardboard chair design and a lot of 3D design classes, a lot of design schools have students <laughs> creating uh, a chair design using the cross slot system. So you've got pieces of cardboard that have slots cut into them and the slots would go into each other and kind of um, mate up like that. Like, and you guys can't see me because you guys are online. Let me just stop the share for a second. Um, if, if, if you have a slot cut in the cardboard this way and a slot cut in the cardboard this way and they slot together like this, you have a cross slot system. And that is, that's a way to put um, cardboard elements together so that they can come apart again. Uh, it tries to take advantage of the, um, uh, let's see, the strength of cardboard. And let me pick this up. Is this on? Okay. Can you guys who are uh, looking at the screen share, can you see, are we back on the cross slot chair again for you guys? Um, anybody? Uh, I can see it. You can. Okay. So this is interesting. The cross slots have to be laid out very, very um, uh, precisely because uh, it's really easy to get these things to not lay out precisely. Um, this also, it doesn't, um, it, it's not something that's attractive to me necessarily because I can see, you know, I kind of weigh too much of the structure of the chair. But if this is something that's interesting to you, you, you can definitely design with this concept of this cross slot chair. Um, at the Rhode Island School of Design or other design schools that are in downtown major metropolitan areas, 
they like to um, assign a chair like this so that it can be broken down and uh, stacked up and you can carry it onto mass transit like the subway or a bus or something like that and get to your design school and then assemble it uh, for your class critique you know right in front of everybody so the idea that this is a knockdown chair that will knock down flat for um, for uh, storage, for transportation, and then put back together again. That is an attractive idea for the cross slot chair. Um, I would like you guys thinking about building a, a chair that is going to be a chair you keep and that you really like the design of. And you try to make this thing so that it fits you and that it's attractive and that it, it, it inspires you and all of that. So if the cross slot chair speaks to you, let's go ahead and Consider this as a possible design feature. Okay, and here's another cross slot chair, just so that you can see. <coughs> One thing that 3D design classes really like to do with cardboard is replicate a lot of the idea of cardboard box manufacturer. Um, the idea of that uh, we use cardboard so much in the shipping and packaging of materials going around the world that. Um, you know, we, we want to maybe think about how we're going to use cardboard um, in a similar way with the cross slot chair. And so a lot of this stuff sort of looks like uh, industrial shapes. It kind of looks like how boxes fit together when you're folding boxes together um, to be able to tape them together and then put stuff inside for shipping and mailing and stuff like that. We'll keep that in mind as we go forward. So Here's one that I kind of like, actually, the box form modular chair. And I've got one that I made last year with my class for the first time sitting next to me. And we're going to stop for just a second and talk about the box form chair because that's kind of fun. Um, so let's try a different video as we're doing this, uh, something like that. And so over here next to where I am uh, dealing with you guys, is a cardboard chair that I made as a as a demonstration chair. And I weigh almost 300 pounds. I'm like a 270 pound person. So I made this chair and this has a whole bunch of different kinds of uh, boxes that have been put together. And I kind of like this chair because it's relatively easy to build. It's relatively lightweight. It's completely hollow. And you know, I went ahead and finished this chair off with a little bit more finish than I'm gonna ask you guys to do. I painted shellac on the cardboard and shellac is a really interesting material. It's made out of um, beetle carcasses um, ground up and um, uh, dissolved in alcohol. And so this thing has been waterproof with shellac and it kind of gives it the cardboard just a little bit more of a tough, almost plasticky kind of a surface. I've had this chair out in the lobby for about a year now, and people have sat in this chair and whatnot, and I've been kind of looking at it to see how much this chair has been breaking down or bending under the weight of people, and it has really held up quite nicely. So I'm kind of a fan of this chair. Um, I'm gonna stand up for just a second and talk about this. This, this chair has the 17 inch seat height. I've gone ahead and run the, forms of this chair all the way down to the floor. So this chair doesn't have any legs uh, and negative space underneath the chair. The chair, the box forms go all the way down to the floor and that transfers the weight, the carrying capacity of the chair all the way down to the floor. Um, the chair, I think, has a flat seat on it. I don't, I did not um, angle the seat at that five degree angle. I don't think, I can't remember it right now, but I don't think I did. But I did angle the seat back at about, you know, somewhere between seven and 15 degrees of an angle. So you do kind of sit back into the chair just ever so slightly. And so it's not just a, an, an abrupt, uh, harsh 90 degree angle on the chair back. Um, this gives you just a little bit of something that you can lean back into, which is kind of nice. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just turn this chair upside down for a minute so that you guys can kind of see a little bit of the structure in here. Um, the, we, 
I had built this thing as three different, four different modules for this chair. So I, the back of the chair was a box and the seat of the chair is yet another box. And I glued the seat to the back first so that I had the seat in the back glued together like this. I was also using these uh, zigzag or Z um, uh, uh, what, do you, what would I call these brackets, uh, supports, something like that. They're made out of cardboard and glued into place. And that helps give some strength and dimensional uh, stability to the seat back and especially um, to the seat because that seat has to carry my weight. I mean, it really has to support 250 pounds. So these interior braces are really important for that. Um, after this, the seat and the back were put to, were assembled and put together, then I created the arms and glued the arms on the side of the chair. So, and the arms kind of do, do a really wonderful job of holding the chair all together because the arm kind of, um, it uh, unifies the idea of the back with the seat and the back and the seat are both glued to the arm of the chair. And so it kind of really helps to give lots of strength and durability to the chair so that the, the seat doesn't break away from the back and the back doesn't break away from the seat. The arms really created a wonderful um, structural way of um, pulling the whole chair together with all of its um, uh, different, three different, uh, forms, the seat, the back, and the arms are the three different forms in this chair, and it all went together. Now, this chair is based on a chair that I have in my living room. I have a leather chair in my living room, and uh, this chair, I, I measured the chair very carefully and looked at a lot of the angles of the chair and everything else, and I tried to um, recreate the chair that was in my living room and maybe change it just a little bit so that it's not a, a you know, direct copy of the chair in my living room. Um, and so that's you know all I'm asking you guys to do. You do not have to invent a chair you know completely out of your head. If you have a favorite chair that you want to work with, um, uh, we, you can definitely take all of the measurements of your favorite chair and then replicate that in terms of the modular box forms. Um, and and that, that's a really easy way to make that work. Let's see, oh, I'm not doing that. What am I doing here? Going, let's see, I'm doing this. I guess I'm going back to screen share. Sorry, I'm having some, some kind of trouble today. Okay, so we're gonna do this. And we're gonna get this back up, this slide back up here again, okay. So the box form modular chair is probably my pick of all of these different approaches to working with cardboard because this gives you kind of a clean look. It um, gives you top surfaces for everything so that the tops of your arms and the tops of your seat and the, the seat form that you actually lean into, uh, the seat back form and the seat itself that you sit on all of those things are covered in cardboard, uh, a, a total sheet of cardboard that integrates the whole form together. So I, I kind of really like the box form modular chair myself. I'm going to try to, you know, encourage you to do this kind of a, full, of a, of a chair if possible, uh, but you don't have to. So <clears throat> let's see, how many more of these do I have? So <clears throat> something that kind of combines some of these ideas together is what I wound up calling the fold tab and slot chair because we again we're kind of working with the idea of making boxes that will fold into each other and then have cross slots that will lock elements into place and this is a really minimal kind of a chair that does something like that you can kind of see that the back is kind of one element <clears throat> that's sort of a box, boxy form that has uh, parts of the chair that wrap around the top, wrapping down around the back and then plugging into the back of the chair. And what's really interesting about this is that 
that same concept is repeated in the seat. We've got uh, parts of the seat that wrap around like a box and then come you know, six inches this way and then lock in this way. So this definitely could be disassembled you know, as a, as a box that could be flattened out, that could you know, fit flat inside of your car or something for transportation and then refolded and put back into a chair um, when you get to your, your next location, your destination. So that's really kind of an interesting concept. It's kind of a hybrid chair. And again, you have to really ask yourself, is this the kind of thing that really speaks to me? Do I really like this kind of a chair? Do I wanna be, um, do I wanna be challenged in this way to try to create a chair that will unfold flat and then that I can fold back into a chair that locks together and does its um, thing? Um, I can't tell you uh, what you want, but it, this is a relatively easy chair because it's only got a back element and a seat element. There are no arms on this chair. So, you know, you know, from one kind of perspective, it's kind of a nice little occasional chair that you could have in an apartment someplace. I'm gonna advance the slide to just see if I've got any more of these. So I do have a couple more examples of the fold tab and slot chair. My, <clears throat> my idea about this is that they probably, um, uh, are made out of uh, multiple layers of cardboard. I'm seeing at least a two ply cardboard here. So there are four, um, you know, four layers of paper separating at least two layers of um, uh, corrugation here for a super strong piece of cardboard. Um, has anybody ever seen a chair like this uh, for sale at some kind of a downtown design? shop or ikea does ikea sell cardboard chairs at all have you guys seen this kind of a thing in you know in seattle or you know portland or tokyo or any place where you might find some really funky interesting uh designer stuff in a downtown kind of a boutique because this has the look to me that it is a boutique kind of a chair that's actually a product that you could buy and then you take it home to your apartment and fold this chair up and use it like this. And then, of course, you can knock it down flat when you move and all of that. So that's a possibility. This one has arms. The other one didn't. OK. And of course, you can really see the idea that when they um, when they market this thing to people and you can buy these in, you know, some kind of a boutique, um, this kind of is really cool. It has the sense of an armchair, uh, a modern, uh, mid-century modern armchair. It has, it's very cubic in its proportions, and yet you have a, slant, a slanted back that you can lean up against and a flat seat to sit on, and you've got arms, and the arms are even with the, with the top of the back. So this thing all kind of sits inside of a cube it's defined by the idea of a cube shape. And this kind of thing sometimes uh, speaks to and appeals to some to people. It kind of depends on you as a designer. Does this appeal to your aesthetic sense? Is this the kind of thing that you would want to be able to live with in, in, your, um, in your house, in your apartment? I'm gonna see if I've got any more. I don't, so now I'm coming back to you guys. So stop the share and come back to James here in the classroom. So that was 45 minutes of me um, prattling on about this kind of stuff. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm just amazed that I, I'm even still alive after my, um, <sighs> my near-death experience with the second uh, shot from the COVID vaccine yesterday because um, I was not feeling good this morning. And so I came in and kind of got really um, up to speed with this. What I want to do with this project is a two prong, almost a three prong approach. We have to, first of all, kind of design our chair. And you're going to be drawing the chair on a piece of paper and taking measurements of the chair and kind of drawing it out so that you can understand the chair in three dimensions as a drawing, 
and I'm going to kind of walk us through this and show you this process. Then we're going to try to make a scale model of the chair. This chair I made last spring, and it's a scale model of the chair that I was just showing you the full size version of. And so, you know, this, this chair basically is one inch equals one foot, or the scale of this model is one to 12. So you can either use uh, inches and feet and go with a one to 12 scale model of your chair, or you can use centimeters and you can go with a one to 10 uh, scale model of the chair. One centimeter equals 10 centimeters. So that we're gonna be building our small um, model of the chair to just make sure that all of our measurements work and that we can get this thing to sort of come together as a model before we try to uh, scale it up to full size and you know, go through all of the agony and work of putting this thing together with glue and knives and full-size pieces of cardboard. So this is gonna take us the next three weeks, possibly four weeks to get this chair done. I'm gonna walk you through the process and it's not gonna be terrible, but um, there are several steps in this chair. It's just like the mask. You know, We have to go through designing the mask in a drawing and then um, designing the mask as a prototype or a model. And then finally um, working with the materials that we're gonna use and making the full size thing. Only this time with the chair, this is going to be a life-size project where we're gonna make a chair life-size so that you can sit in it. The final you know, um, test of this project is to have you guys actually sit in the chair. If you sit in the chair and the chair doesn't collapse, <laughs> then you have you have you know met the the design criteria you've actually designed a chair and built one out of cardboard a life-size chair that can then uh function as a chair uh, a real chair for real people to sit in that's that's the project uh kind of in a nutshell uh moving forward um we're gonna try to come up with a chair design and then we're gonna try to draw out the chair and apply some um, basic um uh sizes to all of these uh things and if you have a chair at home that you really are fond of and that you'd like to make a cardboard version of that would probably um, go a long way to solving a lot of your design problems because you can measure the, the height of the arms and the depth the the depth of the arm and kind of try to take note of these angles of the arm take note of the angle of the back of the chair the thickness of these things and i really liked this chair because the arms were the same thickness as the back so there was really kind of a really nice um, um agreement or uh, uh size and proportion that got carried through this chair design because the arms were the same kind of thickness as this and so it kind of resonates the same thickness or the same proportions throughout the chair which was really nice so i have talked for 50 minutes and probably bored you to death but that in a nutshell is going to be the project that we work on um, starting this week and so i'm going to walk us through that whole process on wednesday i'll be giving i'll be kind of um, walking us through the the drawing and design process so between now and Wednesday or the end of the week, I'd like you to start kind of looking at all of the chairs in your environment and see if there's anything that really speaks to you that you might like to um, scale up as a um, cardboard chair. And you know, I know that you guys don't get into a lot of interior spaces right now. Eden Hall is open and we've got some chairs in the lobby of Eden Hall. That are armchairs that you might be able to look at and get some design ideas from so that's a possibility too um so i guess i'm gonna wrap this up for today um i there's that was like drinking from the fire hose again and i'm sorry about that but uh you you might want to come back to this as a youtube video and look at it again fast forward through the boring stuff and just kind of look at some of those um, chair designs that we were looking at to see if anything really speaks to you that you want to build into your own kind of chair. 
So I'm gonna say goodbye for now. And uh, <clears throat> this is kind of weird. I'm, I'm trying to uh, teach to both the in-person people who are in the classroom with me, as well as the online people. And I feel like I'm, um, I'm looking at the camera all the time. And so I haven't been making much eye contact with my in-person people. I have to figure out how to do this as a hybrid class so that you guys feel like you're um, part of the deal too. So uh, I'm gonna say goodbye for now and we'll see you guys again on Wednesday.